Welcome to a new vlog. Today we're going to be doing a lab tour. This was asked by several viewers of the channel and I understand where that comes from because I think I shoot most of my videos from above the bench. You don't get to see a lot of the uh, lab where I work. So it's only normal to have this curiosity and wanting to see how my lab is uh, set up. So that's what we're going to be doing uh, today. So let's get started. From the door as I enter the room, on the left I have my computer desk and this is where I do all of the editing and any other computer work I need done. My laptop is an older Core i5 Dell Latitude with a docking station and a 24 inch 16 by 10 Dell monitor. It's pretty old by many standards and pretty slow to render video as well but I managed to get the job done. As you can see, I've uh, tried to add soundproofing to the walls to improve the sound in this room, but still it's not enough. The ceiling does not have any soundproofing and I think it's uh, causing issues. Continuing to the right, I have my two benches and they are very clean right now. Cleaner than what they usually are. But I thought I'd show you the lab in a state that I like it. So I like to work in a clean lab when the benches are cluttered, it doesn't feel as nice. So the first bench, uh, which is this one with the green ESD mat, uh, is mostly used for assembly and disassembly of stuff, as well as for the work I do on my RC planes. So let's uh, start from the bottom. I have this small drawer set. I don't know how you would call this one in English, but uh, let me show you a uh, close up. The first drawer holds a big mess of wires and miscellaneous stuff like uh, power banks and some office supplies. The second drawer is for multimeters and as you can see it's pretty full. I need to find a new place to store these but it was pretty convenient to have them uh, here in a drawer. So maybe I will uh, free up some space in the bottom drawer which right now is full of uh, Ziploc bags. So I think I could free up this drawer and uh, move uh, more multimeters in here because it's very handy to open the drawer and find the one you're looking for. On this bench I keep most of my parts. I have these uh, red cabinets for storing parts and they are quite old but I think you can still find similar ones at least here in uh, Romania. Above the bench I have some shelves and the first shelf also has this uh, LED light that I assembled myself. I used some aluminum uh, L-shaped profile to hold some lead strips and it works really well as a heatsink and also because it uh, dire directs the light straight down and uh, protecting my eyes at the same time. Then on the first uh, shelf I have a bunch of uh, storage bins. The first one is for heat shrink tubing. Then I have some uh, small wires and uh, breadboards. Then a bunch of assortment kits like uh, connectors, LEDs, uh, screws, uh, the stuff that I've shown in a previous mailbag. Then I have a bunch of smaller storage bins for like soldering supplies, flux, soldering braid, uh, soldering wire, some PCBs and a couple of other smaller storage bins for pin headers and connectors, stuff that I usually use on the bench. The next shelf holds more storage bins. I have this bin with batteries. I have some 18650s in there. Uh, I have some triple A's, double A's and coin cell batteries. Then a box with uh, miscellaneous stuff. You can see some PCB rulers in there. A box with, I believe are uh, transistors then a box for LEDs and a small bin for adhesives that I use mostly for my RC planes. So let's take a look inside this LED box and see what we have there. 
So like I said, a bunch of uh, different uh, LEDs. These will be mostly SMD LEDs, but I also have some uh, true hole parts in here, like these ones. These are green 5mm LEDs. A few of these uh, modules. These I think are RGB LEDs, the ones that you can control digitally. So yeah, I keep a bin just for LEDs. I also keep a small bin of um, transformers and inductors salvaged from uh, switch mode power supplies and uh, I don't know why I keep those because I only used that uh, bin once when I was trying to build my own AC to DC converter and I tried to reuse one of those, transfor one of those transformers but I ended up buying a new transformer so I could uh, know its specs and design the AC to DC converter better. So I don't know why I keep that box, but it's still there. It's full of transformers and inductors salvaged from uh, switch mode power supplies. Moving up a level, I have a bin of uh, connectors, which is full. And I think I need a bigger bin because I just have lots of different types of connectors. Next to it, I have a bin of uh, PCBs, uh, my own PCBs or projects I've worked on. And next to that is a bin of capacitors. And above that last shelf next to the ceiling, uh, those are my uh, power ICs, which are mostly voltage regulators. Now moving on to the uh, second bench. This is the bench where I do most of my soldering and where most of my videos are being shot. So let's start from under the bench. Uh, in those small bins, I usually keep the uh, mailbag items that are waiting to be shown in a future video. And uh, those bigger uh, storage bins, one of them is for my uh, RC uh, related stuff and another one for computer related um, wiring and modules. To the right side of the bench, you can see my soldering equipment, my uh, two compact T12 soldering stations, plus my old uh, 952 uh, combo, which I only use for hot air these days, and my uh, desoldering gun. This bench also features some LED lights, but uh, this is like version one, and I've used a thinner profile, which doesn't cope as well with uh, temperature as with the uh, previous bench, where uh, that one was built second, so it has some improvements but still the, uh, the same idea applies. It directs the light downwards towards the bench, protecting my eyes. And you can also see my, um, my solder wire uh, spools. Uh, those are placed on a rod recovered from a simple inkjet printer. And I believe those, uh, those two brackets holding the rod are from a rack mount, uh, from the uh, rack mount of an equipment of some sort. Also above my uh, soldering bench, I have these uh, shelves with uh, test gear. And first on the left, I have my uh, Rigol DS1054Z, which I've had for a long time. It's uh, hacked to enable all the options and uh, I really like it. Before this one, I had an O1 scope, uh, which was nice because it had the LiPo battery and a big screen, which back then wasn't so common. So it was uh, portable and isolated while working off battery. That was nice, but it also had a lot of quirks in, in software. So I'm glad I got rid of it and got the right goal. Next, I have a couple of uh, bench multimeters. The bottom one is the five and a half digit HP 3478A. And above that is the six and a half digit Agilent 34401A. These are great bench multimeters and whenever I need uh, precise measurements, I connect and measure with these uh, bench multimeters. Next to that, I have my uh, bench power supply, the HP 3611A, which goes from zero up to 35 volts, but only um, uh, 0.85 amps at the uh, higher voltage range but that's good enough for uh, the um, circuits that I need to power with a clean analog power supply. 
On top of that, there are a few bits of gear that I use for uh, testing multimeters. Uh, I have uh, a DIY current source, the uh, better current source that I received from Fabian, uh, the resistor reference box that I built recently with those V-shaped foil resistors, and the LRC box that I got from AliExpress. And next to those, there are the three go for power supplies that I have. These are switch mode power supplies. They can go from zero to 32 volts and up to five amps each. Uh, they are noisy. You're not going to be using these to power your sensitive electronics, but they can deliver power. So I'm using these mostly for circuits where I need more power. And next to those, uh, a few DIY pieces of gear on the bottom I have my 0 to 30 volts linear power supply. Above that I have my uh, uh, electronic dummy load. So these are uh, projects that I built myself and I will link videos to those uh, on screen right now. Right beneath the next shelf I'm using magnets to store the uh, screwdrivers that I use um, daily on the bench. So I, I got uh, three sizes of Philips screwdrivers uh, three sizes of slotted screwdrivers and a few sizes of uh, those are uh, Thorx uh, screwdrivers. If we go above on the next shelf, you can see the magic arm that I use to uh, record the uh, screen of the oscilloscope in some videos. And then above that I have a uh, box of capacitors and a bin which, control, which uh, contains mostly electronic dummy loads. Next to that I keep all of the chemicals used in the lab. So you will see here some um, uh, isopropyl alcohol, some silicon oil, uh, some WD-40, uh, some flux cleaner, some contact cleaner, some uh, conformal coating for PCBs, so pretty much all of the chemicals that you would use uh, in a lab like this one, where I do mostly electronics work. Now, if I rotate the camera to the other side of the room, you'll see my window blinds, which are kind of purple. So maybe Big Clive would be jealous for me having these uh, window blinds here. And on the other side of the room, there is of course a lot of soundproofing on the wall. As you probably noticed, I use uh, this side of the room mostly for storage bins and for my uh, 3D printer, which is right there. So starting from this corner, uh, I have a toolbox right there on the bottom, then a bunch of bins. Uh, I, For example, I keep a storage bin just for power brick adapters um, a storage bin for uh, wiring of all sorts, a storage bin for mailbag items that I get from China and other miscellaneous stuff. Here is the uh, flying wing that I'm currently building. It's not finished yet, I'm still waiting for some electronics uh, to arrive. And uh, next to that I have my uh, 3D printer uh, desk and there is an interesting story with this one. Uh, because I bought the 3D printer, but I wasn't, um, I didn't have a desk to place it on. So I went and purchased the cheapest desk I could get. It was this IKEA desk. And I must say it's not the greatest idea because it's a light desk. And sometimes it can move and oscillate depending on how fast the uh, printer is moving. So it's best to have a, a more stable desk for the 3D printer. But this is what I have and uh, it, it has worked so far. Below the desk I also have some storage bins. I, ha I think I have a bin with just uh, different types of tapes used for uh, adhesive tapes. Uh, aluminum tape, copper tape, captain tape and cloth tape, all sorts of tapes used uh, for electronics. Uh, a bin with uh, heat sinks uh, and other miscellaneous stuff. Now regarding my 3D printer, this is the Creality CR10 that everybody uh, knows from my videos. And if you haven't seen the latest upgrades I did, it's uh, this spool holder which runs on uh, bearings. Uh, so even with a heavy uh, spool like this one, it's almost a new spool, 
uh, it runs really smooth on those uh, wheels. And I have also upgraded the Y-axis motor mount by adding that green uh, bracing and the uh, double uh, dampers on the front and on the back just to keep the motor aligned with the belt and uh, catch all of those vibrations. And next to the uh, 3D printer, I have uh, basically the last item in the, in the lab. This is a rack that I built myself with some leftover wood pieces. So up there you can see my networking uh, gear. I have a couple of uh, routers. Um, fiber optic comes in into one of those uh, equipment, then it gets uh, turned into Ethernet signal, which goes into my router. Next to that, I have my small Intel uh, Nuke server. I keep a small server here for various services. You can also see the uh, Raspberry Pi there, which is running a um, the um, Big Clown app for collecting data from sensors, which was shown in a previous video and uh, various other items stored there. That metallic uh, box, uh, that's where I keep all my LiPo batteries. In fact, let me show you a close-up of that. So this is how I store my LiPo batteries because they are a bit dangerous. I keep them in a metal can and inside that I use one of these uh, special bags for batteries which are supposed to be fire uh, retardant. So inside that I have all of my LiPo batteries, which uh, hopefully uh, I will not have any incidents with. So there you go. This was the Voltlog Lab Tour. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I will see you next time.